<laughs> nah, nothing. Benio dries and brushes Mayuki's hair. She almost looks like her mother, it suits her. Just after coming out of the bath, Mayuki looks like a completely different person. Who are you? Where did this George's girl come from? Women are seriously magical. <laughs> the digital clock on the table shows it's long past midnight. You can see that without your glasses? She actually doesn't need glasses, huh? She makes a strange face. Beeswax. We are complimenting her, but for some reason, Mayuki is not happy about it. Just removing her glasses and putting her hair down completely changes her appearance. She is leveled up to a pretty girl worth a painting pictures of. But does it feel like there's a little bone stuck in my throat? It's like I've seen Mayuki's face somewhere before. Hmm, maybe it's just me. After her bath, she suddenly started feeling all of the day's fatigue. Mayuki is struggling to keep herself awake as Binyo dries her hair. Okay, good night. The two of them disappear into Benio's bedroom. They seem strangely like sisters. Guess I'll go to bed too. I yawn alone now that no one's here. For some reason they both come back out with sad faces. What's wrong? I guess they're talking about Kagome. No way. Kagome, I just told her to go back to her own bed. Uh, what a roundabout way to cause trouble for me. Ah, sure, if you want, but it's gonna be tough fitting three people on it. <laughs> Would that be a problem? Yeah, I wonder about that too. Come on, you have to try new things once in a while. <laughs> her delusions run wild, petrifying her. Fine, fine, I'll sleep on the sofa. You two can use the bed. Ben your son's nice. We waste a lot of time in the great Japanese tradition of being too polite to each other. The waves of westernization assault us. Benio cuddles Mayuki like a stuffed animal. And then... Bino sinks into my uh, thighs. Her little head rests gently on me, a chain of lap pillows. <laughs> so, what about me? Do I have to stay perfectly still until morning? That's a heavy burden. My torment is unappreciated. They head off to dreamland at the speed of light. I remember those heavy words. What reason would I have for getting involved in those underground games? I have no idea. The gigs are games, the fighters aren't monsters like Jack the Ripper was. They put on a mad show with their own special rules. An insane game that gets people killed, however, both sides did accept that risk, so it's firmly protected from the criticism of stubborn, morally righteous outsiders. They're not destroying the world or hurting any innocent bystanders. You can't fight something just because you don't like it. It takes some serious power and talent to cleanly split the world into friends and enemies the way Izawa does. 
I'm not strong enough to live like that. The best I can do is crawl around through the vague grayness. Isawa, Benio, Mayoki. I don't know about Haru, but the other three are all drawn to the events and for different reasons. The gigs. A suspicious charm like that of a bug lamp. Communes have five people. None of us can live or die alone. Unlike with Jack the Ripper, I might be the one forced to follow the others this time. I can remain stubborn and have nothing to do with this, or I can obediently follow the majority opinion. If I successfully remain stubborn, I'll be satisfied, but Babylon will be weaker, which puts me in more danger. This is stupid. Eyes and hair the color of night, the witch's prophecy re-enters my mind. Well, it's not like she ever did make sense. A long time ago, when I was much younger, I met her in a mansion that looked like a castle. Even back then, Hinaori Kagume was a ridiculous woman. This time she gave me a sudden riddle, as if to say monsters will eat me if I can't solve it. Not a cloud in the sky, the blue expands uninterrupted, bright enough to wake me up if I was asleep. It's the middle of third period. I lie down alone on the deserted roof, looking up at the early summer sky. Nomad, unhesitating bloodlust incarnate. Kagome said it's the same as me. I remember the red color. Red memories I thought I'd forgotten, bloodlust I should have buried long ago. I see it in my dreams over and over, that black heat pierces my chest. It may have been an unavoidable fate, but I killed him with my own hands. I chose to kill him, and I did it, once again. Oh, it's Hisoka. A blue sky, a white triangle. A perfect viewing angle that isn't my fault, even God would forgive me. Hey! She looks down at me from above. I'm still not used to seeing her in that uniform. A presence as thin as air. She's there, but it feels like I might lose sight of her at any moment. Suijima Hisoka is just that kind of woman. Nope, I wasn't thinking about anything important. I try my best not to look directly at it as I talk to Roof Dweller number 2. I feel like I haven't seen her around for a while. Number 1 hasn't been coming to school lately either, so this roof has been quite empty. Been absent a lot lately? She nods, still expressionless. Ah, that's right, you couldn't come for five years because of that. Five years. Five years ago, I wasn't in the city back then, when those terrible events took place. No doubt, they changed many people's fates. Hey, what were you doing back then, Soejima? The pain everyone shares. Since I live in this city now, I can't avoid it. I'm the only one who doesn't share it. This is my hometown, but I feel like a foreigner here. Silence. I can't read her expression. She just looks up at the sky with a boundless gaze. Glass eyes reflecting blue. You've been looking at the sky that long? The wind is a little strong. Her soft hair and the hem of her skirt flutter in the breeze. Suijima's outline wavers like heat haze. You really like the sky. She doesn't shake her head. Only a slight change in tone tells me she's giving a negative answer. The mistake? I know too many girls who like to talk in riddles. Soijima's lean figure in the wind looks even colder than usual, like a huge hole in the sky. I become anxious for no reason at all. The end of an infinite blue, a girl who only looks at the sky. And by the way, I think I saw you a while ago. I changed the topic, I'm not good with mysterious spiritual conversations. In the business district, on a Friday night, was that you, Soejima? Yeah, that's right. 
Something in the corner of my mind is bugging me when I saw her that night. I'm pretty sure she... Nice outfit, by the way. So it was you. Is that a yes or no? A doppelganger? The word comes out of my mouth without any thought. It feels uh, serendipitous. <laughs> Sorry, forget I said anything. I don't know. I have no idea what to make of her now. Oh, that's surprising. The answer is surprisingly boring once revealed. The new heart doesn't feel like a place where people live. Maybe that makes it surprisingly appropriate for Soijima. Um, I... I've seen people get killed. Mm? Ah, wait. What was I about to say? Why say that under this blue sky? It's nothing. Ah, you smiled. What am I seeing in Soejima? I don't know. I stand still in the labyrinth of riddles. Not as much as you. The fourth period bell rings. She looks up at the sky again. An enormous mirror reflecting the blue sky, a herd of new buildings spreading out from the station. Between the buildings is an enormous temple of glass. The new Takakura station, a huge renovation to replace the building damaged by terrorists five years ago. The man sees it as a grave, a modern art piece constructed atop corpses. What this grave needs is harmony. But all I hear is static, white noise. The world is still far from harmonious. Pious, decorated men and women and pretty buildings. As for J-Pop on the Jumbotron. Under the footbridge is a van that hasn't been washed in a month. He drinks a limited edition canned coffee while reeling from the parking ticket on his windshield. Not one thing is excessive or lacking, but it all lacks harmony ever since five years ago. <sighs> Taguchi? Did we meet a Taguchi before? I can't remember. A younger man sighs beside him. いや、具体的に何がって言われると辛いんすけど、例えばこの仕事も何も特別な才能いらないっつうか。こう自分が歯車になった顔も強く感じるっつうか。人間ってのは誰しも社会の歯車さ。いや、絶対それだけじゃないと思いますよ。なんかこう特別な力持ってるやつらがいるんすよ
The afternoon town continues moving. The man mutters as he looks down from the footbridge. He rolls up his left suit sleeve. His watch says 30 minutes until the meeting. For a member of society, it's good manners to arrive 5 minutes early. Senpai. The man's suit is a dark grey, almost black. It's an old color and in the wrong light it looks like a funeral outfit. He couldn't possibly stand out more beside the glass station. He turns the van's key and feels the engine start to vibrate. He sets his destination in the car's GPS and steps on the accelerator. Sunlight cuts through gaps between buildings, making him squint. He reaches for the radio, but changes his mind and whistles instead. The hue of spring sunlight reminds him of an old movie he liked. About a girl who wandered into a foreign land and went on a long journey to find her way back. Beyond the rainbow. The melody doesn't fit this room, filled with the smell of tobacco and the rumbling of the engine. This Macbeth has been doing well recently. The Avatar gigs an official site. There have been almost 10 tournaments so far and lots of regular attendees. There's even a chart ranking all the communes that are still participating. Macbeth is in the top 10. I do remember seeing that guy. He's won 4 fights without a scratch. Her weak answer enters my ear. She puts her jaw on my shoulder as I look at the monitor. Binyo is weak to perverted subjects, but she can be very defenseless at times. She'd be easy to snatch up. She feels different with her hair down, a girlishness unlike her usual energy, the unique smell of a girl who just got out of the bath. It's different for me and Kagume, so that smell makes me conscious of the fact that I'm inside someone else's personal space. That's a weak reaction. She's still slow on the uptake. Benyu, weren't you more enthusiastic about this the other day? Her head sways around. Nomad. She reacts. Apparently that's what uh, was bothering her. The red color behind the facade of the game. The gigs are completely fine with crossing the line into murder. The killer and the victim both give their consent in advance. Thus, the justice Binyo wanted isn't there. There wasn't even an evil enemy to defeat. Vibrations tickle my shoulder. Binyo quivers with emotion when you corner with her logic. You can always stay out of it. Even Izawa wouldn't want to go if he can't get all five of us. I hope. I'm not that confident. The truth is, I don't know what exactly makes Komus choose to fight at the gigs. But I can't imagine any of them fight without all five people. They must have wrestled with the same questions. What's the point in fighting? What is there to fight against? Even a group of five will have completely different opinions. Other people are always in complete isolation from you. Even if you can agree to fight, some of them might like it and others might not. And yet, avatars need all five commune members to fight effectively. Yeah. 
小心者組合員としては今度はプレッシャーが Don't rock the boat. It's best to cross the road at the same time as everyone else. Things just work better that way. Come to think of it, wasn't there something like this in Japanese history? I vaguely recall some kind of system from the Edo period that had a rule about everyone dying if anyone failed. So, yeah, but. I'm not sure if I'm going to be a good person. Hmm. A sudden thought. Are there communes in other countries? Maybe America, China, Russia? Are communes unique to this one city, or do they appear everywhere? So, you are the one who is 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 I'm more like the guy you want to be friends with. I always get to the good lines and talk like I've broken through the world's limitations. She presses against my back, even more defenseless. I think back to when we first met. Rome wasn't built in a day. It's nothing, it's nothing. She presses more. Mm, there's someone like you in my class. I won't say what part's similar. A cold voice. The tickling on my shoulder and the wonderful sensation on my back go away. It was a little annoying having those on my back, but losing them feels lonely. Selfish, self contradicting desires. Binyo is not doing too bad. This used to be a space for only me and Kagume, but she's invaded it now. I've started getting used to her presence without realizing it. Now then, time for today's hard labor. I turn off my laptop and grab my wallet and phone. Well, my shift is at night. Sorry for making you cook all the time. I thank her like an old man. She brings up a problem people have been pointing out for a long time. Karma tends to enormously complain about that a lot. Are women biologically incapable of tolerating a man's laziness? Normally, my neighborhood childhood friend takes care of those things. She makes a bitter face. Yeah, she is just like that. No matter how close I get to someone, it's still impossible to understand another person completely. Especially in Kagome's case, I don't even want to try understanding her. We happen to be fairy tale childhood friends, but the witch lives in barren outskirts where no other humans dare set foot. That's right, have you decided where you are going? I'm honored, but anyone who comes here is going to think we're a student couple living together. There's no smoke without fire. Huh? Men are monsters, you know. Speak for yourself. She roars like the lion at the beginning of a movie. I feel like she's challenging me. That almost makes me want to prove you're wrong somehow. <laughs> Don't go quite there. She goes red and her eyes spin. You couldn't take it? Binu is completely defeated now. Maybe you should take another look at the listings before you die of blushing. I walk across the living room with Benio watching. 
The black-haired ghost is devouring snacks on the sofa, even though I'm sure she wasn't here a moment ago. She's practically a uh, Zashki Varashi at this point. I feel like I should ask how she's doing it. Zashki Varashi? Is that some kind of demon or something? This is kind of awkward. Though I doubt Kagome would care about what we were just uh, saying, even if she did hear all of it. Suck, suck. Please don't laze around my apartment in total silence like an assassin. From behind, that black hair makes her perfect for Japanese horror movies. I don't say that out loud since I don't want any fresh wounds. Neighborhood childhood friend, I'm heading to work now. She raises one of her long legs instead of answering. I feel like a cat just flicked its tail at me. 